Hey, it's Coulter. I'm here today with Mike Shinoda, your brand new record, Post Traumatic. Very excited for that. Thank you. So you joked earlier, you said this is probably your 50th interview for the day. No. But you've done, a, like, admittedly, you've done probably quite a few at this I point, have, right? Sure, yeah. You do these tours. Yeah. You hear these questions all the time. I'm sure you're sick of answering them. What's a question that you want a guy like me to ask you? Something that you're like, maybe it's like a hidden talent of yours or a side project <laughs> or just, just something Cobra handling, maybe. Cobra something handling. that you just, like, you, you really want to talk, but you don't want to make it seem like you're pushing it. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple random things, and we'll find one right really quick. All right. Okay, have you ever been to a gallery art show? No. Never, Th right? A gallery would never want me inside. Come well, on. Okay. Guy like you, big celeb. No, come on. Okay. Scumbag like but me, no chance. But for real, I, what I, the reason I say that is because I, I had this interesting conversation with a friend of mine the other day. Isn't it weird that like, like so I for me, going to art shows is like something I do all the time. It's super fun. I love going and you get this like, like you're looking at a collection of work, a body of work made by somebody who had like a vision or like a thing to say. Sometimes it's political, sometimes it's emotional, sometimes it's just silly. And these are these, this fun experience you go and usually there's a bar. Some people are like, there are always crazy people there, artists dressed all weird and thinking weird thoughts. And it's something that like a lot of young people have never checked out before. And I was like, I was, it's something that I want to bring because I'm an artist. I painted all these things as I was making my album. I painted all these things. And I'm trying to figure out how do I now take those paintings and maybe art by other people and like get them in front of all those fans to give them that awesome experience. Do you think maybe some people um, have this perception of art or art shows as well, this is kind of snobby? I, this is maybe a it used to be that color. way. My point is maybe it skipped a generation because I think the youth are, they're looking at Virgil Abloh, Takashi Murakami, Shepard Fairey. Like they're looking at these dudes as the coolest of the cool. And like a guy like James Jean, who originally was like a, um, this is a guy who was an, an illustrator and did things like even comic books then evolved into becoming a graphic, uh, um, uh, a gallery artist, and then, and was doing things for like making designs and prints that were put on like Louis Vuitton. Young people are seeing all of this stuff on social media and they're idolizing it. Like they're, they're drawing it on their notebooks, they're printing it out and putting it on things, they're referencing it in, in raps and stuff. And they're starting to realize like, oh, it's like really cool to like, this stuff is really cool and I can go see it in person. Like I can see the actual thing he painted with a brush on a canvas and it's right there. And, and at the opening, like the man is actually standing there. And it was like, he painted the Kanye West and Kid Cudi album cover. But he's, he's like Murakami, for example, is like the Andy Warhol of our time. Like it's an incredible um, thing to go see one of his shows. So with your art and with the dichotomy of storytelling between, you know, uh, Telling a story with painting, with art, versus telling a story through music is the process, at least developmentally, is it different? Do you tell different stories different ways? Do you use the various media to do so? So I, when I do, when I work, it's, it's a, there's a lot of similarities between making visual art and making music. And in fact, like when I was in school for art, we'd have to work for hours and hours and hours on a piece. It's a class full of, say, 20 people. 20 students go and they spend 40 hours on a painting. And they bring it in on the day that it's, there's a critique. And you bring in your painting that you've worked 40 hours on. And everybody puts them up on the, on the walls. And we go down the line and tell each person why their piece is terrible. <laughs> and this is, this is what's wrong with it. And this is also terrible. And this is what's wrong. And I kind of like this, but not really. And you hear that from the entire class, all of your peers and the, and the instructor picking your thing apart. There are a couple nice things that are said, but it's a lot of negative. Um, it gave me a tougher skin. It also gave me an ability to listen to criticism in a way that was constructive. And the listening is the part. Like people's criticism isn't always in, isn't always constructive. Sometimes you hear something, and you go, "That person is just they're, like their their goals are different than mine. Like their intention is different. They don't want to get the same thing out of it." Um, also true in music and other ones they you know they're just right and you go wow like that drives me crazy what they said and it's because it's right in all of the Linkin Park albums 
we went through a lot of that type of a process. Uh, we went through many, many iterations of critique as we made every song we've ever put out. And so when it came time to do this album, Post Traumatic, I realized that the album, the things that I was writing about were very personal and I wanted to, I realized I needed to put it out as a solo album. Um, one of the challenges of doing that is that I didn't have this other group of people to like help me with the critique and say like, like I, if I said like, I'm confused about where I should go with this thing, there was nobody else to say, oh, you should do this. So once again, it's sink or swim and it's all on your own. So it, I had to hold myself to a higher standard. Um, and the question I had to ask myself was, okay, when then what's the standard? What, how, do I, how do I get to the place where I can be really critical of my own stuff? And the, one of the challenges that I, that I decided on was I have to be as honest as possible and just really tell the truth. Like, what is it, the truth about how I feel about something, the truth about what just went on today, um, and really not kid myself. And once I got there and I like really, as I was like writing things, it's, you know, I'd actually type them out and I'd just erase it and like all that because I know okay, that's almost true, but I can smell a little BS going on and, and that's coming from me and I would fix it. So as it went on, I, I, it was a, it's a diary. It's a diary in a sense. 